The Star Wars franchise changed the face of science fiction. From X-Wings to the Death Star, the original trilogy inspired kids across the globe. Those same kids were able to continue the adventures of Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, and other characters from a galaxy far, far away by playing with Star Wars toys. The documentary Plastic Galaxy explores the world of Star Wars toys and those that collect them. The film's director, Brian Stillman, is here to tell us a bit about how Star Wars changed the face of the toy industry. So, Brian, I see you brought some toys for us here today. Uh, I did. These are all original Star Wars toys from uh, 1978 and 1979. They all came out when the first movie was out in theaters. And um, they're sort of, it's sort of a broad selection of, of action figures and vehicles and, and sort of role-playing toys that, that kind of helped create this, this whole new toy world that really transformed um, the movie industry, the toy industry, um, the way kids played, all, all sorts of things. So will you start off by telling us a little bit about, about this, this over here? So it this? looks like Luke and Leia and... Well, this is the uh, Star Wars early bird set. So Star Wars came out in May 1977, and at the time there was no real precedent for uh, toys as licensed tie-ins. There had been toys in the 50s, there had been little sort of serial giveaways and things like that, but there was no huge action figure line. Nobody thought it would work. Um, they tried it with a few movies, Planet of the Apes, and it, it just bombed. So Kenner the company that made Star Wars toys, they had this license and they didn't really know what to expect. And when the movie came out, they did not have action figures. They weren't sure it was necessary, it didn't really matter. But then Star Wars was huge. It was the biggest thing of all time. And they said, we have to have action figures. It's, it's a no-brainer. The problem is getting them out for Christmas was impossible. It was May, you, you need a year to sort of get toys really into production. Um, so what they did is they put out a, a, an envelope, a cardboard envelope. It's about that big, and it was the Star Wars Early Bird mail away. And in this envelope was a little coupon you could cut out. The envelope could open up into a kind of uh, stand for these action figures, but no action figures. You would mail that coupon away, uh, Christmas 1977, and in <laughs> March of 1978, you would get the first four action figures. And this is what came in the mail. It was, you'd get a little white box, um, and you'd open it up, and there would be this tray with the four figures. Uh, again, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, R2-D2, and the little pegs that would allow you to stick each figure in the stand. So the troop transport's pretty cool. It does not appear in Star Wars. And as a little kid, that didn't even register in my mind. It, it, I didn't understand there's, this needed to be this one-to-one -one correspondence. Um, what I loved about it was, A, it looks awesome. I mean, it's this cool, weird, futuristic, sort of, sort of wedge, blocky vehicle. But more importantly, this thing talks. So you press a button, and for instance, you have different stickers here indicating the different sounds it can make. So you have like C-3PO. So it says a line from the movie and different buttons would say different things. Um, to me, you know, if you own an action figure, it's like, oh, I kind of have this, this representation of the movie. That's really cool. But hearing C-3PO talk was like having C-3PO in my living room. And I thought as a little kid, that was just the coolest thing in the world. And now, Boba Fett, Star Wars villain with his laser rifle. Boba Fett is not yet available in stores, but you can get him free with four proofs of purchase from any Star Wars action figures. This Boba Fett, this one, is absolutely 100% normal. There's nothing special about this figure. <laughs> but Boba Fett himself has sort of an interesting history within the Star Wars toy world. In 1978, one day, you're in the store, you pick up an action figure on its little card, and on the card says, mail away for a free figure. Whoa, something totally cool. And that free figure was Boba Fett. And on the back of the card, they describe what you're getting. You're getting this cool action figure with a rocket firing mechanism. So this little rocket on the back would have been able to fire. Unfortunately, between putting that ad out and releasing the toy, a kid choked on a, uh, as the story goes, he choked on a rocket that was fired from a Battlestar Galactica toy. 
Um, there's all sorts of film and TV irony there that I won't get into having to do with Star Wars and Battlestar. <laughs> anyway, so Kid choked on a missile from Battlestar Galactica toy. So safety rules were put into place to prevent stuff like that happening. And Kenner went to work trying to make their rocket firing mechanism safer. They couldn't do it. They couldn't find a way to make it so it wouldn't accidentally launch or whatever. So the figure that eventually got mailed to kids was this rocket, or was this Boba Fett with a rocket that's sort of welded in there. Um, and it even came with a little, little slip of paper that said, we're sorry, we know you were expecting this, but we can't send it to you. This is what you're going to get. For years, you could meet people who would insist that they got a rocket firing Boba Fett. But it never happened. Kenner never released him. I mean, the legal department put their foot down, so it was never going to happen. Um, however, Kenner made a lot of prototypes of that toy. It was very far in development before they killed the idea. And over the years, collectors have been able to get those prototypes. They survived. You know, designers brought them home with them, employees brought them home, because they were just toys. Um, and eventually they made it into the hands of collectors. So you can, in fact, get a rocket-firing Boba Fett in various stages of production. Uh, some are painted, some are unpainted, painted different colors, different designs, a couple different designs to the rocket mechanism. Um, but you never had one as a kid. And uh, today, amongst collectors, because of that sort of, that sort of robbery they felt as, as kids, you know, not getting the toy that they were promised, those, those prototypes are very much in demand today. Uh, they're very hard to find. Um, they're not cheap, but they are out there. So I remember hitting my little brother with a plastic lightsaber. <laughs> uh, and yeah. this, this one does not look plastic. <laughs> no. Um, the, the lightsaber that you beat your brother with <laughs> is uh, called the Force lightsaber that came out during Empire Strikes Back and then Return of the Jedi. And that was a long plastic tube. They definitely figured out the, the proper material for sibling beatdown. But... <laughs> Prior to that, they needed to make a, uh, a safer toy. So the first attempt at a lightsaber um, was this one. This is the inflatable lightsaber. It's literally a vinyl tube. It came out during Star Wars, during the first movie. It's a vinyl tube that you fill with air, and it attaches to a flashlight. And when you turn it on, hey, hey it's a lightsaber. Um, much less damage. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Not really Not much to it. And it kind of wobbles. And um, they understood exactly what they were selling because it's the only toy that Kenner ever made that came with a little vinyl repair kit. <laughs> so they completely understood that this was a, a toy that could not really take a beating. Yeah. But, you know, it was cool. It was, it was a lightsaber. And the kids, you know, today there's so many different lightsabers out there that you can buy kids at the time, this is what they had, and it was unlike anything they'd seen before. Well, thank you so much for coming in and showing us all of these really cool toys. Um, thanks for having me. Thanks. It's always fun to talk about toys. Space.com.